In this the next 20 minutes together, I hope to give you a good overview of genetic genealogy. So if you're here at the conference and all of you are just hearing DNA, like everywhere you go, I'm standing in line, people are talking about DNA. I'm in the bathroom, people are talking stall to stall about DNA. So it's everywhere. So this is going to give you that foundational knowledge that you need to figure out what it is that you already have, if you've already done some testing, or maybe what else might be out there and available for you. So. The very first thing that we must remind ourselves of all the time is that DNA is part of our genealogy process. So it is in addition to the traditional genealogical research that we do, it is not going to solve all of your problems. I know, it's depressing. And the testing companies want you to believe that it's going to solve all of your problems, of course. And it will help, but you will still have to do actual genealogical research. So as I... This is my fifth year at Roots Tech, and I go to a lot of conferences, and I've been doing this for about 17 years, and I can narrow down the questions I get into three different categories. Either which test should I take, what will I get from the testing, or will it help me? Now, lately, I don't get as much which test should I take, because most everybody I talk to now has already taken a test. They're asking, okay, I did this and this just because somebody said so, but I want to get it for my great aunt or for my daughter or someone. Which test should they take? So how many of you are in the market to purchase a DNA test at the conference? Okay, lots of you. Great. Hopefully, I'll be able to help you answer those questions. So. It seems like a logical place to start. Which test should I take? It seems like a good beginning. But really, you have to ask yourself first, which tests are available? It's multiple choice, which is always easier than a short answer, right? We always want multiple choice. At least you have a chance of getting it right then. OK, so let's do multiple choice. In DNA testing and family history, you actually have three choices of what kind of test you can take to answer your question. There's the Y-DNA test, which traces a direct male line. It goes across the top of your pedigree chart. The mitochondrial DNA traces a direct maternal line going down the bottom of your pedigree chart. So we spent the 3 o'clock hour really going over these two types of kinds of tests in a Roots Tech session. I am going to go over those here too because I know all of you weren't in my class. And I love these tests and I think they're getting swept under the rug a little bit, right? And we need to resurrect them. We need to bring them back to life. The one you hear about all the time is autosomal. That's what all of these companies are offering you. Autosomal DNA traces both sides of your family tree, both your mom's side and your dad's side. So those are the three kinds of tests. It's also important, and I have taken this slide out for years because I don't really get asked this anymore, but then literally two weeks ago, somebody sent me an email and asked me if I had to give blood. So I felt like I should put it back in, just FYI. There's no more blood. We used to draw blood back in the old days when I first started. Not anymore. Now it's just a simple cheek swab on the inside of your mouth or you get to spit in a tube. That's it. So it's really simple, painless. You can do it from the comfort of your own home and you can send it all through the regular mail. Now not all companies are shipping worldwide. So you have to kind of pay attention to your testing company and where they're shipping so that you don't get caught purchasing a kit or and it doesn't go where you want it to go. But in general, you can pretty much get a DNA test to anybody that you need to get a DNA test to. Okay, so now that we know there's three kinds of tests, we know you take the test using a very simple cheek swab. You can also, no, you can't. You can't ask which test to take yet. You can. First, I want to tell you what you're going to get because let's face it, this costs money. It's very cheap here at Roots Tech, but it still costs money. So we need to make sure that you know what you're getting so there's no surprises. So every test you take, whether it's Y-DNA, mitochondrial DNA, or autosomal DNA, you get two kinds of results. You get results that link you to people, and you get results that link you to places. So if you take a Y-DNA test, for example, your Y-DNA test is helping you learn about your direct paternal line, this guy at the top of your pedigree chart. So this test is a record of him. It's an exact record of him, which is kind of exciting. It's like going into your great aunt's attic and finding a whole treasure trove of information. That's what your DNA is really holding for you. It is a record of your ancestors. So why DNA testing traces only a direct male line. So only men can be tested. 
And it's not on Ancestry. So Y-DNA is only offered by family tree DNA. The full Y-DNA test is only offered by family tree DNA. The best thing that can happen when you take a Y-DNA test is you find the one, right? You find the person who knows more about their family history than you do. So the way Y-DNA works is that your ancestor up here, he passed his Y-DNA down to his son, who passed it down to his sons, and so on and so on, until we test living men today. So even if you don't know who this ancestor is, if you match this guy, that means you share that ancestor. There is an ancestor that you share on that single direct male line. And if this guy has his ancestry back to 1702 and you're stuck in 1850, it could be really helpful to have his DNA in that database to match you. So she asks, should we have the oldest male tested? Always, in all DNA testing, have the oldest person tested, because there's always a chance of mutation. So you can test younger people, especially with the Y DNA, it really should be the same, but testing older generations is always better. The worst thing that can happen if you take a Y DNA test is that you don't find anyone. So really it's about perspective though, because if you don't find any matches, you can either be like, I'm all alone in the world. There's, there's just nobody. Or you could say, I'm unique. I'm a pioneer. I'm the only one in my line to brave the world of DNA testing. So it's really up to you how you want to look at it. So she's asking, why does this happen? Why do we not find any matches? Well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, no one's tested, okay? No one with your direct paternal line has tested. So either that means they're not interested and they're not doing it, or for Y-DNA, lines daughter out. My dad is the last living male in his line for like four generations. And this happens, right? So knowing your own family history, knowing if there's a whole ton of girls and not very many boys, you probably aren't going to find very many matches. Another reason is if your line has recently immigrated into the United States, these databases, while growing globally, are still very US centric. So if you're first generation American and you test, you might not find any matches either, just because people in other countries haven't tested. So at Family Tree DNA, this is their average regular retail price. At the conference, the prices are significantly cheaper. So if you've been thinking about doing Y-DNA, or if you haven't been thinking about Y-DNA, you should be thinking about doing Y-DNA, then this is the time to buy. Now there are three levels of testing that you can purchase. You've got a 37 marker, a 67 marker, and 111. That's just telling you how many locations on the Y-DNA they're looking at. So more is always better, right? But more is not always economical. So 37 is great. It's a fine place to start. I think ideally you would start at 67, but you can always upgrade later. Without submitting a new sample, you just give them more money, they run more testing. So she's asking, how does this happen? How does this work? How do they get the DNA from, their an from your ancestors? You carry that record in you. So we're pulling that information from your DNA and telling you information about your heritage based on your modern DNA. So something you can do to try to see kind of what the landscape is for your surname is to go to Google or whatever your favorite search engine is and enter a surname that you're researching and then follow it with the word DNA. So my maiden name is Hazelwood, so I would search Hazelwood DNA and see what's out there. There are already so many family projects just waiting for you to join them and to find out what they're learning using Y-DNA and your surname. So how useful is Y-DNA in my estimation? Y-DNA is amazing, helpful, I love it. I feel like it is a great test, it's a great starter test. It's easy to interpret and understand for the most part, and I, I think everybody should do it. That's, that's what I think. So mitochondrial DNA traces a direct maternal line. So it's like the same thing we were talking about, but now flip it over to your direct maternal line. So best case scenario, again, you find the match, right? You find someone in the database who shares your DNA, which means they share your maternal line, and they know something that you don't know. So 
I think the worst case scenario, obviously, if you don't have any matches, that can be bad. But with mitochondrial DNA, I think what happens more often is you get tons of matches, a thousand or 400, and you can't look through all of those people and make assessments about your relationships. So sometimes if you have a really common or really popular mitochondrial DNA, you'll have tons of matches and it can be frustrating to try to work through all of those. So again, only at Family Tree DNA are they offering this full mitochondrial DNA test. Living DNA and 23andMe both give you a small portion, which is great and fun and helpful, but it is not as genealogically valuable as doing it through Family Tree DNA. So I give mitochondrial DNA three stars because for most people it probably will not give you some sort of breakthrough in your family history, but it does sometimes. And it is still a record of your direct maternal line. It does represent your mother and her mother and her mother and her mother. So it might still be worth your while. So Y-DNA can be used to find out about any man in your family tree. Mitochondrial DNA can be used to find out about any woman in your family tree. So autosomal DNA does both. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why do wire mitochondrial when you can just do autosomal and do both, right? Well, the thing about autosomal DNA is that it's really tricky to analyze and understand because if I'm matching you, I don't know if you're on my mom's side or my dad's side, I don't know, it's harder to figure out. Where for a mitochondrial DNA match, we have to be related on my mother's 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 line and her mother's 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 line. So it's just easier to work with. Additionally, autosomal DNA is really only helpful back about five or six generations. And then it can't help you anymore, at least not with the current technology that we have. Mitochondrial and Y do not have those limitations. They can go back much farther in your family tree, helping you make connections in the 1600s, where autosomal DNA it can't really do that yet. So autosomal DNA, remember it can touch any person in your family tree that is four or five generations back. Okay, you have to stay within that time frame. Autosomal DNA works because all of us have two parents. See how much you knew about biology? You guys probably already knew that, okay? It's the two parents that make us, right? You got half of your DNA from your dad and half from your mom. So what the databases do is they take you, right? This is really what you look like, this mixed up hodgepodge mess of your ancestors, right? And it compares you with somebody else's mixed up hodgepodge mess. And if you share enough DNA, they consider you to be related. So what do you get from this autosomal DNA test? This is a good question. But first, you need to know about the companies because what you get depends on where you test. So. You've got five, I'm, I'm calling it four and a half actually because Living DNA currently, like I said, is not doing cousin matching, but they did actually announce today that that cousin matching is coming within the next six months. So pretty soon I'll change this slide and it will just say five testing companies. But right now, there are four and a half DNA testing companies providing you with autosomal DNA testing. They are all giving you two things, a page on their website with people that match you. DNA cousins, and some sort of pretty map telling you about the percentages where you come from. Every company is doing this. They're just doing it in different ways. This is the regular retail prices for these companies, and I want you to notice living DNA is usually $169. You'll see in their big hanging banner over there, $49. This is an incredible deal, people. And I really like their company. I like their core values and where they're going. I think they're fun and I think they've got a bright future ahead of them. Sometimes I feel like we need to make it real, this family history thing that we're doing here. We're spending all of this time. A lot of you flew in from other places. I heard in the media dinner last night, we have someone at Roots Tech from every single state, which is pretty cool. And like 49 countries, I don't remember what they said, but a lot of countries. So for me, this was my first real interaction with reality in DNA testing, and this happened several years ago. This image is called a chromosome browser. This image shows you the locations, this dark blue lines, on your DNA that you share with other people. So over here is chromosomes number one, two, all the way down here to 22, and there's my X chromosome. On these chromosomes, I'm sharing DNA with my cousin. And I thought, this is really cool. I can actually see 
physically see pieces of DNA that I got from, from an ancestor. So I reached out to this cousin and I said, hey, this is who I am and who are you? And he writes back and he's like, wait a second, I know you. I was like, okay, who are you or who am I to you? This was my dad's cousin. They're actually related through Lucy J. Clanch, who is my dad's great grandmother. Lucy actually had two husbands, and this cousin of ours is a descendant of her um, first husband, and we're a descendant of her second husband, which means that all of these blue pieces of DNA that you see right here, those are pieces that I share with my cousin that came from Lucy. This is real physical evidence of my connection to this ancestor. Now, she wasn't a new name on my pedigree chart. She wasn't a, a brick wall. She had already been there. But I was looking at her now with new light because I could see the DNA that I got from her. And it made me want to get to know her more. Lucy is a, a really interesting ancestor. And I didn't even know she was that interesting until I started looking at it. So she, when she was seven, her family moved from Texas to Washington State, which is where I grew up. So she lived in this little tiny logging town. And by the time she was 16, I'm sure she was fresh out of options of boys to date, right? That's how it is in small towns. And then this man right here, Mr. Palmer, breezed into town. Mr. Palmer was born in England and he had just been on this cross country journey and probably this was a little pit stop on the train route and he gets off the plane with his fancy accent and she's like, uh, yeah, I'm with him. And she got on the train with him and continued all the way to Oregon, which is where his family was, where he was heading out to settle. And they got married. And within four years of marriage, they had three kids. Holy cow, right? And then, I don't know what happened to Mr. Palmer. All I know is that four years after they're married, she's crossing the border into Canada with two toddlers and a babe in arms to see her husband, is what the record says. She came back to Washington, and he didn't. And I don't know if he died. I don't know if he left her. I've tried looking through Canadian records. I can't figure out what happens to this guy. But all I know is that by the time she's 22 years old, she has three kids and no husband. And what do you do when that happens? You go home, right? So she went home. By then, her parents had moved to a, a, a little town in Washington State where I was born. And she went back there. And she lived with her parents until she met my great-great-grandfather and married him and had more kids, thankfully, which is where I came from. But when I connected with this cousin, he had this picture of her because this is his ancestor. And there she was, there's Lucy at the tender age of 18, just barely married and left everything she knows. And I look at that picture and I thought, I think I look like her, don't you think? And for me, that made it all real and it made it all worth it. And this DNA was my connection to her. It made me feel something. It made me want to know who she is. And that's what this is about, family history. It's about telling stories. And I feel like DNA gives you that extra connection to people that helps you want to keep going when you can't find the answers. So for Lucy, I'm still, if anybody knows what happened to Mr. Palmer, I'm all ears because I'm really interested, even though he's not my ancestor. So how useful is autosomal DNA? I would give it five stars. I think it can impact your family history that much, but there is a learning curve. So sometimes you get frustrated because you can't figure out what the website's trying to tell you, which is why I have a company and a business. My booth is right on the other side of this wall, and that's what I do. I teach, and I've written quick sheets, and I've, I've prepared video tutorials to try to help you get through all of this stuff so that you can have wonderful discoveries in your family history. So if you're going to get tested, this is the last option, right? This is what you really wanted to know, right? What test should we take? So I think everyone should take the Y-DNA. I think it's a great introductory test. At Autosomal, your best bet is to start with Ancestry. Just because you tested Ancestry, then you transfer for free into Family Tree DNA and into MyHeritage. So for the price of one test, you get three databases, which is amazing, right? 
But of course, I told you how much I love Living DNA. I do love them. I love their product. I love their company. 23andMe has a great product, especially if you're interested in health. So, I mean, you can do everybody. But if you're asking what I think you should do, test first at Ancestry Autosomal, transfer into Family Tree DNA, and into MyHeritage for free. Then, if you're really ambitious, go for the mitochondrial. But again, for the most part, you will be disappointed by what you get. So. This is Lisa Louise Cook, and thanks so much for joining us here for our Rolling Out the Red Carpet YouTube series. Now be sure to click that red subscribe button here on our YouTube channel, and that will get you notifications as each new video comes out. Thanks so much for watching, friend. I'll talk to you soon.